Uh, uh, Mr. Nomini, clap, uh, that is a... Uh Salako, Adegule, Adeboye, right? Welcome to the Senate. We are only doing a um, co uh, confirmation screening. We are not doing approvals and, uh, and confirmation yet. So, just, so we ask is just to ask questions, note, look at your CVs, evaluate everything about you, your personal, your, your life details, and uh, every other thing. And thereafter, the Senate will still go into further sitting on confirmation and approvals. So th this is just screening. So please, let's not exhaust all our bullets. If you have anything against any 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 uh, nominee, when we are going into the confirmation and the, the approvals, before we forward to Mr. President and Commander-in-Chief, you still have a right to bring it up. Uh, uh, from your resume, give us a very brief summary. And please, let's just use five minutes or three minutes to give us a brief uh, summary of your resume, your person, where you were born. And if you don't know the name of your village, say so. And there, thereafter, you answer questions from the civil senators. Your Excellency, the President of the 10th Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Distinguished Senator Gosfield Opot Akpavio, the Deputy Senate President, Principal Officers of the 10th Senate, Mr. President, sir, please permit me to recognize the three senators from my state, Oku State, starting from the senator that is representing me as a constituent of Oku State, Oku West Senatorial District, Senator Solomon Olamile Adiola, the Chairman, Senate Committee on Appropriation. Also to recognize the senator representing Oku East Senatorial District, who was governor of Oku State when I had the privilege of serving as commissioner in Oku State, Senator Engineer of Tsumba Binga Daniel. Also to recognize the senator representing Oku Central Senatorial District, my big egmon, Senator Shuaib Afolabi Salis. 
distinguished senators. I want to use this opportunity to also thank Mr. President, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the Commander-in-Chief, for giving me this opportunity, and to also thank my political leaders in Ogu State, particularly my governor, the governor of Ogu State, Prince Dako Abiodun, C-O-N, and also the former governor of Ogu State, Aremo Olusegun Oshoba. My presence here today, Mr. Senate President, is like breaking a jinx. By nominating me, the President of Nigeria, and my governor have broken a jeans because since the inception of this democracy, this is the first time somebody from my senatorial district will have the opportunity of being nominated to be a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And in the history of Nigeria under democratic rule, this is the second time ever. So what Mr. President and my governor has demonstrated is to show that when they talk about inclusivity, it is not only about political leaning. It is about the diversity in Nigeria. Everybody being given a voice. And I would like to thank Mr. President and the governor for this opportunity. I also want to thank the Senate, sir, because I know that most Senates in the world, both parliaments in the world, are on recess. But this Senate have decided to shelve their recess to treat this matter. I want to sincerely appreciate the Senate. Once again, my name is Salako Isaac Adekunle Adeboye. I was born 56 years ago, precisely on the 8th of August, 1967, in Ayetoro, the were not local government of Ogun State. I am a full homegrown boy. I have studied all my life, all my school in Nigeria. I believe passionately in Nigeria. I believe that Nigeria is a gift to the black race and that everybody must join hands to make Nigeria great. I have never conceived and I have never attempted to travel out of Nigeria because I believe in this country. My primary education was at the United Primary School at Yetoro, after which I proceeded to the prestigious Abiyokuta Grammar School for my secondary education. I then went to the then Ogun State Polytechnic, now Moshu Dabiola Polytechnic for my advanced level, before going to the prestigious University of Lagos where I studied medicine and surgery. While a student in the University of Lagos, I was a student leader and I participated actively in all student political activities. I was president of my faculty I was a parliamentarian of the University of Lagos Student Union. I was very active. After my student days, I did my, UCEP, my um, internship at the Lagos University Teaching Hospital before I was posted to the old Abia State for my national youth service. While doing national youth service, I volunteered for the Nigerian Guinea Worm Eradication Program for which I was given an award by the NYC Abia State as one of the top 10 coppers of that year. I also got the Presidential Golden Handshake Award of President Jimmy Carter of the United States. After my university education, I started my working career in some private hospitals before I was also employed at the Lagos State Health Service Commission. And then after a while, I resigned and started my private practice before I was appointed as a commissioner in Ogun State, where I had the opportunity to serve in three strategic ministries. The three most important ministries, in my opinion, that takes care of food, agriculture, takes care of housing, a shelter, that is housing, and that takes care of health. I performed to the best of my activity in those ministries before the end of that government. And I then went back into private practice in 2020, the governor of Ogun State, Prince Dakwabi Odun, also gave me the opportunity to be the chairman of the Ogun State Hospitals Management Board. We also performed to the best of our activity. I'm a master degree holder in public health 
and I'm currently pursuing a PhD program in public health with specialization in health policy and management. I believe strongly that the health sector of Nigeria is challenged, but our solutions must be contextualized. It must reflect our peculiarities as Nigerians. We cannot just import. Yes, we have a lot of things to learn from health systems all over the world, but our own health system must reflect our peculiarities. We need a lot of funding in the health sector, but what do we want to spend the fund for? It must be well defined and well atomized so that we spend optimally to the, best, to the greater good of our people. At the moment, our health structure, our health system is basically focused on curative care, and we need to do a lot more with prevention. Thank you very much, Mr. President, sir. Senator Izonazo. Thank you very much, Mr. President, sitting as chair. My name is Senator Osita Izunaso. I represent Imo West. Mr. Nomini, congratulations for being the first person from your senatorial zone to be so nominated. I'm interested in your CV. I've gone through it and I've seen a lot of things that you have done, both in the private sector and in the public sector. Particularly of interest is the fact that you are doing your PhD right now on health policy and management. But my worry is about NHIS, National Health Insurance Scheme, which we started about 25 years ago. And the overall aim of it is to provide financial barrier for families to have access to, uh, uh, to health care. But is our NHS, is it really working? Because if you have a medical emergency now and you are rushed to the hospital, you might not be treated if you don't pay money. So if you are made a minister for health, what is, are those reforms that you are going to bring to bear so that we can make the NHIS more workable and more affordable for Nigerians? Thank you, Mr. Senate President, sitting as chair, for the opportunity given to me to talk and my distinguished senators. Gide Ipijaba is my name from Ondo North Senatorial District. I, I have to congratulate you for being nominated. And at the same time, um, I can predict that you might find yourself in the Ministry of Health. Now, my major concern is this. I want to talk about the local content. Local content, um, has been very, very successful in the oil and gas session. But coming into the medical line, you can see our people selling the health sellers. The Yoruba called these people that they sell ago in Yoruba language. Now, when you get outside the country, you find out that they will import some materials into Nigeria, package it very well under the umbrella of um, food supplements, and we will be buying them. Now, how will you um, moderate this when you find yourself in that position so that we can also make money 
from the selling of those things in Nigeria, instead of condemning them that they are not good enough, they will disturb your kidney and your liver. Meanwhile, this same thing of what our forefathers were living on, and you cannot compare their age, I mean their ages with what they have today. So I want to advise or ask you, if you find yourself in that ministry, how will you encourage these people to develop that skill into where we can make use of it productively in Nigeria? Secondly, this is a question to you for any purpose. Now, in the course, I can see your CV very robust. I want to ask, what has been your greatest strength in the course of carrying out all this assignment? And lastly, what has been your greatest weakness in the process of carrying out this responsibility? Thank you very much. Uh, distinguished uh, uh, Sadiku, thank you, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues. First, I want to start by congratulating the nominee and also appreciate Mr. President for keep supply, supplying us with credible nomination up to this moment. Mr. Nominee, my questions borders especially on the inadequate working tools in our hospitals. You can see also that we have not just poor services, but we have poor distribution of available workforce. And recently, in Lagos, we lost a medical doctor to an avoidable incidents. So is this now becoming a culture in our hospitals that even the maintainers of the existing infrastructure are becoming a problem? So what are you going to prefer as a medical doctor going in to contribute to the workforce of the Federal Executive Council that can make or supply the needed solution to some of these challenges. It is not just in Lagos, but because it happened to a medical doctor last week, it became a news. So I need your answer. Thank you, Mr. President. This is Senator Tony Way. Thank you, my president, sitting up here. Distinguished colleagues, my name is Dr. Tony Nguye, representing the people of Anambra Central District. Let me thank by, by let me start by thanking Mr. President for appointing this man, a colleague of mine, senior colleague of mine for that matter. And let me thank Mr. President sincerely that this year marks or this section marks a departure because of the very fact this is the cabinet that has the highest number of doctors if they are confirmed from what I read. Uh, but I have a question, two questions, simple. Uh, Dr. Salaku, knowing fully, we haven't read your resume, knowing fully well that your own brother, Professor Oluko Ransom Kuti, of the Blessed Memory, was a job as the one of the best health ministers Nigeria has ever produced. This man built our, our health system around the primary health care system. And he suited the National Primary Health Care Agency in 1988. That was the year he launched it. And used 52 local governments in Nigeria as a model to test run it. And today, our primary health care is not only built on that, but is deteriorating every day. What are you going to do? If by God's grace, this Senate confirms you and the minister assigns you a portfolio of, as other health minister or, or minister of state, what are you going to do to revamp our ailing health, health, health sector and also to 
recognize universal health coverage, which is a global issue, vis-a-vis -vis bringing that model, that initiative for Soluko Ransom Kuti of Blessed Memory brought so that we can go near achieving him. That is number one. Number two is that if you are confirmed as a Minister of Federal Republic of Nigeria and you are assigned the portfolio of Minister of Health, either as Minister of State or as the Cabinet ranking, which is Senior Minister, what are you going to do about the brain, global brain drain? What I'm asking about global brain drain that when we're in medical school, we used to hear that young doctors would travel to London, Germany, America, Saudi Arabia to look for greener pastures. But these days, professors, consultants, medical pre uh, personnel, uh, pharmacists, even PhD people who have PhD in pharmacy, nurses, midwives, consultants of different degrees, uh, 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 optometrists, and other medical, the very senior ones, still travel abroad, abandon our country to look for greener passion. What are you going to do to stop this ugly trend? Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Uh, Senator Benson Eboe. Your Excellency, the President of the Senate, my distinguished colleagues, I want to ask the nominee, looking at where I come from, I am from the place that is considered the most remotest of all the places in Nigeria. And so cut off from the events that are happening in the mainstream of Nigeria. Now, we are discussing about health issues as it's relating to your resume. I want to just simply ask, I'm so disadvantaged as I am, and so displaced and mismanaged by Nigeria. In the event this Senate confirms you, will you be able to identify where I come from by way of policy and inclusiveness. Sir, where I come from, if you, if you want to know, is just by the Atlantic Ocean. We share boundaries with America. We share boundaries with America but very far from America. As I speak, for me to get to my village, I have to be covered under waterproof on a speedboat before I get there. Just this morning, I had a phone call from a woman that was delivering and could not deliver. And they have been trying to bring her and that will amount to one one hour 30 minutes before they will get to Yenangwa. This is what we suffer. How will you be able to attend to these issues in the river line where I come from? Thank you, Mr. President. So that I will be very close to me. Thank you, Mr. President, sitting as a chair. Uh, use your mic, please. I congratulate you on the nomination by Mr. President.
when by your resume most likely when you are confirmed by this distinguished senate you might be taking care of the or you will be leading in the health sector my question to you is simple i have had the opportunity to chair the immunization activities in my state when I was the deputy governor. And from the series of meetings I attended, the immunization coverage especially year in, year out, despite the sensitization, especially in the north. The coverage is just a little above 6%. The southeast of this country has the highest immunization coverage. When you are confirmed by this distinguished Senate, that's the Southeast has about 40%. And you can imagine in the North, we have less than 10% of the immunization coverage. When you are being confirmed, eventually, if you are confirmed by this distinguished Senate, I want to find out from you what policies or what actions are you going to take in order to ramp up the immunization coverage across the country? That is one. Number two, the GAVI is the global action on immunization. And as you are aware, all the states, the 36 states of the Federation, they are participating they are stakeholders, and we contribute year in, year out. But however, we have problems in the procurement policies or in the procurement activities uh, procedures by Gavi. One of the challenges is the Gavi don't, in most cases, sit down with the states that are concerned to find out exactly or what exactly they need. i give you an example. Last year, Gavi distributed some vehicles, heloxes, and motorcycles. But to our surprise, most of these vehicles they distributed in order to help with our caregivers back across the streets, they have they are using diesel. They are using their diesel engines. So this shows that or what that means is they didn't confer with the states. So if you are confirmed. We, we, then, when we had meetings with them, we complained to them. To all the states that were participating in that stakeholder meeting, complain to them. So what exactly, if you are confirmed by this distinguished Senate, what actions are you going to take to see that these are being corrected? Thank you very much. The last question, uh, Senator Gwenga Daniels. Thank you, our Senate President. My distinguished colleagues, 
I am Otumba Engineer Benga Daniel, representing the good people of Ogun East Senatorial District. Mine is not a long one, it's going to be very, very short. Uh, I noticed that in the course of this uh, screening, we have spoken to probably about four different uh, medical doctors. And so one is not particularly sure which portfolio is going to come to our person. And that's why I want to provide the information that uh, Dr. Isha Slako that we are speaking today is a very, very versatile, quite intelligent personality. In the course of working in Ogo State under my watch, he had the privilege of looking after three different portfolios. He was Commissioner for Health, he was Commissioner for Agriculture, he was also Commissioner for Housing. And in all of this, I want to say to my colleagues that he carried himself creditably well. Um, we had thought that he was not going to perform when he was made Commissioner for Housing and even Agriculture, and he did exceedingly well. So I just want uh, my colleagues to take note that in Dr. Isha Sayalako, we have a very versatile, very hardworking, very intelligent personality who can hold his own in any portfolio that he is virtually given. Thank you very much. Uh, The President of the Senate, once again, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, the question on national health insurance scheme, which is focusing on why the low coverage and what is the solution to improve the level of coverage. First, I think the Ninth Senate have given us one solution by amending the law. Initially, the law of the national health insurance scheme made it optional. If you like, you subscribe. If you don't like, you don't subscribe. The law has now been amended and is now compulsory for you to subscribe to the National Health Insurance Scheme. But that is not going to happen overnight because health insurance is a culture. It is something that it is not part of our culture, which means that we must spend time on advocacy, on enlightenment, so that people see the benefit of subscribing to health insurance. The other thing is that once they now subscribe and they're able to see, even if it's 20% that is subscribing, and the 80% can see that those 20% are doing better than they are, that is also an incentive for increased subscription. So it's something that's going to take time. But I believe that we are on the path to improving health insurance subscription in Nigeria. On the issue of local content in our healthcare system, I did mention that we have a lot to learn from other locations, but our health system must reflect our peculiarities. There's a place for alternative and complementary medicine in our health system. In Ogun State today, under the leadership of, Otuba, of uh, Prince Dako Abiodun, we have the Alternative Health Board, which is to bring the alternative health practitioners into the umbrella that is regulated by government. It is important that the national body, that is the federal government, comes up with policies to encourage this and to ensure this goes down, such that alternative healthcare system is brought formally into the healthcare system of Nigeria. On my greatest strength, well, I, I often, always believe in a team play, and I always see myself as a team player. Each place that I've had the opportunity of working, whether civil servants or colleagues 
who are, are not civil servants have always had the privilege of working amicably in a team manner with everybody, which has achieved, which has helped us a lot in achieving our objectives. On brain drain, well, brain drain is a very, very big problem in Nigeria. There's no doubt about it. Earlier on today, I was checking the WhatsApp platform of my colleagues that we graduated together from the University of Lagos in 1992. Close to 50% of us are outside Nigeria. There are 105 people on that platform, and that, out of that 105, 55 are outside Nigeria. That is a reflection of the level of the challenge. But I believe that brain drain is both, a, is both an economic problem and a non-economic problem. Each time, we have always looked at it from the narrow angle of economy, that people are just traveling because they want better pay. Yes, there's nobody who doesn't want better pay. But job satisfaction, the environment that you work with, the equipment to work with, is also a very important element in, um, prom in uh, encouraging people to leave the country. I believe in tackling the brain drain issue, we need to look at that. Again, we need to also inculcate more the spirit of patriotism from medical schools, from training. Because I, Nigeria invests a lot in the training of medical professionals. Uh, for example, if I've had to pay my way through medical school, I'll probably be just finishing paying the loan. But most of us, we go through medical school almost free, which means that there has to be a system, there has to be a policy, not necessarily forcing people to stay, but encouraging people to stay. I believe that that's are the ways we can approach the issue of brain drain. On primary health care, um, the cornerstone of our health care in Nigeria is the primary health care system. And if you look at the document of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, his manifesto document titled Renew Hope, you will see that the cornerstone of the health care system that President Bola Ahmed Tinubu wants to implement is with the primary health care system. I believe that what we need to do in Oku State, as an example, under the watch of Prince Dakwa Biodun, one of the things that was done is to ensure that we do not necessarily go ahead building physical structures. Buildings do not deliver health care. You can build the greatest structure in the world if you do not have the requisite professionals and the requisite equipment to work with, you will not achieve anything. So what it means is that in doing our primary health care system, first we need to structure our physical structures in such a manner that it serves the purpose that it's meant to serve. And we also need to bring in a lot more personnel into the primary health care system. We need to encourage the state. We need to encourage the local government to also do that. A uh, distinguished senator that asked the question about the inclusion of remote areas in the health policy of Nigeria. I want to assure you that from what I've seen from the manifesto document of um, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, I think there is inclusion. What is required? First is that, for, as a specific example of the woman in labor that you spoke about, now we have what we call traditional bath attendants who are trained to be able to take deliveries. And they're also trained to be able to spot challenges very early. And once you spot challenges early, you can easily move such a patient to a more, uh, uh, a more advanced center so that there can be appropriate intervention. This will be pursued. We also have uh, water ambulances and uh, water uh, transport system that can be provided to move people from such remote locations to better equipped centers. Improvement in demonization coverage. Uh, I want to observe that I believe that there is 
improvement, even in the north, there is improvement in the immunization coverage in Nigeria. And if you look at recent statistics, you will see that we are on the upward trends. Once again, immunization has a cultural um, aspect. And until we approach it from that cultural aspect, we bring in people that um, the grassroots people will listen to, bring in imams, bring in uh, alphas, bring the people that they live with them, that they trust, who can tell them that our culture is not against this. Go and do it. We will continue to go on the upward trend. Thank you very much again for the opportunity, sir. Okay. For answering all our questions, you may now step forward and then, and then courtesy and take leave of the Senate. Yes.